Meanwhile, accusations of evidence tampering in the Maui fire investigation as nearly 300 people are still missing in Lahaina. The Washington Post is reporting that Hawaiian Electric is being accused of hauling away fallen power lines, transformers, and other equipment before investigators could get there. Will Kane's the co-host of Fox and Friends Weekend. He has family who survived there. Uh, Will, I know you have many stories to tell, and you've you've been extensively covering all of this. But what is your reaction to this reporting from the Washington Post that says, "Quote: The Hawaiian Power Utility, believed to have started this deadly Lahaina fire, removed damaged uh, power poles." and other equipment from a key fire scene potentially affecting evidence that is part of an official investigation into how this blaze ignited, Will. Yeah, my reaction to that, Sandra, is that everybody is very interested in finding accountability, and many want to find a bad guy in this story, and Hawaiian Electric is not doing themselves any favors in casting themselves in the role of the villain. There are questions here um, about Hawaiian Electric, like why was their electricity continuing to flow to Lahaina throughout that day? Electricity was lost, power was lost somewhere around 6 a.m. It came back on at various times. There's been um, surveys of the electrical grid that day, Sandra, and it, and it looks like, uh, you know, there's a revelation of pops or outages right when the first fire broke out early in the morning at 6 a.m. And, and there's video, as you know, and I think most people watching have seen the video of a downed power line sparking into dry grass. I can tell you that those power lines often with Hawaiian Electric were old, rickety, wood power lines, and there was 80 mile an hour winds that day. They were also on notice. There was a big fire in 2018, and since that time, I mean, the power lines weren't put underground. They weren't really upgraded to big, you know, uh, reinforced steel structures. So you had a catastrophe waiting to happen. And then to know that after the fact, according to the Washington Post, they already removed some downed poles and lines from the suspected start of the fire sure makes you look guilty. Now, there may be reasons, and they may say, we want to get power back to the public as quickly as possible, and we needed to clean up for safety the area. But there are protocols, from what I understand, there are procedures, and these broke all the procedures of removing equipment after a fire. And knowing the ATF would then soon be on the ground there to have removed um, any of this, obviously, would impair their ability to thoroughly carry out an investigation. So that's according to lawyers in the Washington Post, that the Maui utility may have compromised evidence in this fire investigation. But meanwhile, Will, um, there are many that we know, we know this as a fact. They had no warning, they had no way out uh, in these Maui fires. We know there was significant failures that occurred, including emergency sirens that were never used well. Road closures prevented people from escaping. Some had to, to, to clear barricades just to survive. Uh, there were evacuation orders that were given just too late, Will. Mm -hmm. That's all very true, Sandra. And you say, why? Why was there such extensive failure? And I think that's what everybody is asking. How could you have such system-wide failure to the point where, for many, they look at this and they start to go, well, that much failure looks intentional. Let me tell you what I have been told and what I've come to understand. Um, Hawaii, as a government system and public service, often is, is, is filled with patronage. People get jobs often because of who they know or who they're related to, because of what family they're in. That doesn't breed an environment for competence or merit, no competition. There's that element. There's also simple human error. There's also cascading catastrophes. I've talked to people who are working with, counseling the guys on the ground that day who were pointing people towards Front Street instead of down the highway because there was a downed power line, and that would seem to be, in the moment, the most um, immediate catastrophe or, or threat. Mm. Obviously, in retrospect, cut that line. Hawaiian Electric, stop power flowing into the town. Yeah. Get people out of town on the highways. But from what I've been told, nobody appreciated how fast that fire would barrel through town. I mean, I, I've been told it was going from house to house the way it would through a field full of wild, uh, wild grasses. A mile a minute, you know, boom, 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 an hour and it was through town. Mm. And nobody appreciated that, or at least the guys on the ground and those receiving some direct instruction weren't appreciating that. that's the immediate threat. So you have human error. And I can tell you for a fact, there's a ton of guilt and there's a ton of um, reconciliation happening right now from some of the people that made those bad decisions, Sandra. Yeah. So you've got patronage, you've got incompetence, you've got human error. Um, you've got all kinds of things yeah. contributing to what and amounts to, well, the worst disaster in American history of the last 100 years. 
and, and far too many still listed as missing uh, even at this hour. We are praying for them and hoping for the best. Will, thank you very much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.